All right, all right, settle down now. Hello, travelers. This is Professor Blepp. Welcome to Invocation Academy's TCG 101 series, where we'll learn various TCG concepts through easy to understand 10 minute lessons. My goal is to turn you from a third rate duelist with a fourth rate deck into a genius invocation champion. In today's lesson, we'll discuss card advantage, a simple but very powerful concept that can apply to all TCGs. We'll then look at dice advantage, which is related but unique to genius invocation. If this is your first TCG, you might not have thought about the game this way before, and I bet by the end of this video your game will be significantly improved and you'll be winning more against NPCs and other travelers alike. So let's dive right in. The basic idea behind card advantage is simple. Since both players draw only two cards a turn, playing cards that draw additional cards will give you more cards than your opponent over the course of the game. More cards means more options. Because of this, you'll want to include some card draw in your deck. Lieben is by far the most popular, as he doubles as a dice fixer. We'll come back to this term a little bit later. Treasure Seeking Sealy is another great choice, giving you the best efficiency with three cards with just one dice. In fact, most decks will run both of these together. Strategize and Liyue Wolf are less common, but are also strong options in the right deck. Card Advantage has added implications for Genius Invocation, since any card can be used to tune dice, so every card you have is useful. I mean, I'm sure we've all had a game where you've used up your whole hand and you're feeling helpless after drawing only two cards for the turn. Avoiding situations like that is why card advantage is important to think about, and no one really wants to be at the mercy of dice RNG. And speaking of dice, Genius Invocation of course is not just about the cards, and we're going to spend the rest of this lesson talking about dice advantage. The basic principle is the same. Since both players each roll 8 dice around, playing cards that generate extra dice will give you a dice advantage. And more dice means more skills, which means more damage. Simple. But there's a little more to it than you might think, so let's take a look at the different ways you might generate dice advantage. The most straightforward way to do this is to play cards that give you more dice than they cost to play, netting you additional die. Let's go over those first. The most common ones you'll see are what players often refer to as the woven cards. I'm sure you'll recognize these immediately. In order to add these cards to your deck, your team needs elemental resonance, meaning it has to contain two of the same element character, which by itself is actually a disadvantage. But these cards are so powerful being able to unconditionally generate an additional die at any time that you'll see many decks choosing to build with elemental resonance rather than bringing three elements. If you're a new player, I'd highly recommend starting with resonance decks. They're usually very easy to play, but they're also extremely powerful due to having access to wovens. Next are cards you'll collectively hear refer to as ramp cards. These cost some dice now, but provide additional dice in future turns. If they provide more dice than they cost, then you get a dice advantage. You'll definitely recognize Paimon here. She's one of the most universal cards for dice advantage, giving back four dice for the cost of three. Pretty much an automatic inclusion when building any deck. Tenshukaku has a similar effect, but it's a little harder to activate and takes at least three rounds before giving you dice advantage. But it does have the potential to generate dice advantage for the rest of the game, which can be very powerful in the right deck. You might recognize Gambler's Earrings and I Haven't Lost Yet, commonly included in many decks, but why are they so strong? Well, now with dice advantage in mind, you can probably start to see why. Any character that equips Gambler's Earrings before killing another character immediately gives you back one die, with the potential for a second activation later. Similarly, I Haven't Lost Yet provides not only that additional die, but also an energy. Your opponent does have some control over when you can play this card, but that doesn't mean it's any less good. Then, there are cards that don't generate dice, but reduce the costs for actions and skills, which translates directly into dice advantage as well. Changing shifts is particularly powerful, as all decks eventually are going to want to swap characters, so at some point, this will generate an additional die for you. Other cards like Northern Smoke Chicken or Sumeru City have similar effects, but they're a little more narrow and maybe need a specific deck in order to work well. Now we're done with the obvious ways to generate dice advantage, but there's more. It's not just about how many dice you generate, but it's also about how you use them. As an example, let's compare Bennett's normal attack to their skill. Both use the same number of dice, three, but one is obviously significantly better than the other. Almost always, you'd prefer to use your skill over a normal attack. So not only does the quantity of dice matter, but also how efficiently you spend those dice to do damage. The more skills you use, the faster you'll pile on damage, and in that way you're actually creating dice advantage. Okay, you might be thinking, Professor, you're just stating the obvious, which is right, but let's take a moment to consider the implications of this. For example, ever wonder why these characters are so strong? What do they have in common? 
Well, each of them has a 5 cost skill, but what exactly is so special about that? Well, to quantify it, these 5 cost skills are extremely damage efficient for the number of dice used. If you spend 15 dice using these skills, and your opponent spends the same 15 dice on different skills, you'll do more damage. This is a form of dice advantage. This works in the reverse too. Cards that can block or heal damage more efficiently than skills deal damage will generate a dice advantage when used. This is why you'll often see Lotus Crisp and Mushroom Pizza included as food in a deck. Using one dice to mitigate three total damage is simply more efficient than most skills. Now at this point you might be thinking I missed something obvious. Of course skills are stronger, they are harder to use because you need three or more dice of the same element. Basic attacks can use those unaligned dice, the grey ones. And you'd be right. But that leads into the next important point. Cards that can convert dice to Omni Dice or let you re-roll will generate dice advantage too. These are called dice fixes. Even though they don't actually increase how many dice you have, they help you use skills more often. You can of course always tune one of your cards, but if you rely too much on tuning, you might start to run into problems with card advantage, which we talked about at the beginning. Carefully balancing these two concepts is actually a huge part of the strategy for Genius Invocation. And that is why most decks will still run some cards specifically for fixing dice. Bestest Travel Companion and Toss Up are two of the most common ones you'll see. Favonius Library is also a popular choice for decks that like to play for the long game, giving you repeated rerolls at the cost of a die. And decks that are built to use normal attacks often have a slight advantage naturally here, as they are less reliant on generating specific elements for skills and can use their basic attacks. These decks are often going to look for the quantity of dice over the quality. But even the best of players will be cursed by bad dice RNG at some point and end up with some unusable dice at the end of the round. Wasting those can put you at a dice disadvantage, and that's why some decks will run additional ways to store unused dice at the end of the round into the next round. Lieben once again is the most popular choice for this, being able to store three dice and convert it into not only dice but cards, but Varanara is also a very powerful option which has a recurring effect, meaning you'll never have to waste those last two dice again. Finally, Stone and Contracts is the least flexible of these choices, but it does provide the most Omni Dice of any one single card, allowing you to carry forward three Omni Dice into the next round. And that's it for the basics of card and dice advantage. It's a real simple concept to learn and start applying right away, but this definitely yeah. only scratches the surface. Learning on your own as you play more Genius Invocation though is part of the fun, so I'm not going to ruin that for you. Next time you're trying to make a decision about what to do in your turn, first think about dice advantage and how best to generate it. By just making the most out of your cards and dice each turn, you'll see an improvement in your gameplay immediately. And as another exercise, the next time you look at a deck list built by another player, see if you can identify how many cards are being included for card or dice advantage. I think you'll quickly begin to understand how valuable these cards are. And I hope you might also start to understand why some of maybe your favorite weapons or artifacts aren't commonly played in very popular decks. Try to work out how those cards actually generate dice advantage and compare them to some of the cards that you've seen in today's lesson and see if you can figure out which one is actually better. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the others in this series and level up your Genius Invocation game. If there's anything you'd like to see in an upcoming video, drop a comment and I'll see how it can help. Until then, Class dismissed!